Okay, we're back live in San Francisco. Final wrap up for the EMC VSpec launch. You can hear him breaking down the background, or maybe not. Uh, the big stage here, big event. I'm here with Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman from Wikibon, the research analyst, best analyst on the business, Wikibon, working with SiliconANGLE. Dave, another great show. Um, EMC, uh, the Jeremy Burton show continues, putting on a high tech clinic. Of marketing, I thought he was great know. today. I mean, I've seen him you know, a number of times. He was very clean messaging. He, when we first met him, remember he said, uh, big on messaging. He, he's living up to his statement there. Big, bold fonts, uh, simple, efficient, flexible, uh, big logos for EMC. But let's talk about this. This is really a channel game changer. It's about the channel business. This is a services angle special. Uh, there's some tech involved, uh, Stu will weigh in on. But this is basically a packaging, as you said, Dave, a packaging of a lot of stuff into a simple product, bringing it into the channel, and let's unpack this day. So let's start with, Dave, my question to you is, what's your take on this? So we had a lot of uh, interviews came through the cube, we had a chance to grill everybody and get the knowledge out there, extract the signal from the noise. What's your take on this? And you, know, you just put out the converged uh, market, TAM is huge. Just overall, what's your, what's your take real quick? Well, VCE got it all started in 2009 with VBlock, and at the time, a lot of people sort of questioned, what's, what's the real value of that? Well, I think it's clear the value of it is this market is enormous. As we just talked about, there's a land grab going on. You've got defenders, you've got attackers, and it's a huge business, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, and I think that what we've also found is that it's a complex world out there. There's a lot of diversity, a lot of choice that people want to have, and you're seeing a spectrum emerge of integration but integration that is proven and tested. And so we're starting to see that spectrum mature. And you're starting to see the vendor landscape uh, fill in some of that white space. So going from sort of V-block, uh, chunk of infrastructure, exadata, to you know, what HP has done and others, and now V-specs, where they're putting in a lot more choice and a lot more flexibility. Um, as that happens, the channel becomes a much, much more important factor because the channel then is really going to drive a lot of those choices. So big week for converged infrastructure, right? Do you think it's going to work though? I mean, you know, do you think this product will work for EMC? I do. I think that this is exactly what the market wanted. I think that there's been tension. Uh, I think the uh, I think the channel has been pounding on, you know, VCE to do something like this and I think VCE rightly made the choice is no, we're going to stay focused on the on the, the the model T. Now maybe VCE down the road once it you know, really reaches that critical well, mass. We kind of flip flop. You, VC kind of flipped off, flip flopped on the channel, right? We had them saying, "No, VC goes through the channel still." And a lot of their stuff goes through the no, channel. No, they do on it, but they said originally then they announced the channel. We broke that at the, at the mega well, launch. Well, right. But but so I guess the point is that when VCE went to single SKU, the channel sort of said, "Well, we want more flexibility." And VC said, "Well, we're not going to give it to you." And I think EMC smartly said, "Well, we will." You know, because there's four or five times more business in reference architectures than there are in you know single SKU, and I think that's what we're seeing here. And I think what's what's really interesting. I mean, it, to to me, VCE is all about VMware and getting VMware populated. Um, this is really about you know continuing to gain market share. And in order to gain market share, you have to have converged infrastructures. You have to put some meat on the bone with with reference architectures and labs. And that's what you know Prasad Rampali's group is all about. And there's only a certain number of vendors who can do that. The channel can't do that, right? They need to lean on the large vendors out there. And I think that these reference architectures and these proven solutions are some of the best freebies in the business and vendors that make those investments are going to win. What do you think, Stu? Stu, what's under the covers? Tell us about the tech. Let's, uh, you know, and then I'll get your opinion. Okay, well, I, I do want to talk a little bit about this reference architecture because one of the challenges here is that there's flexibility, but will we actually see lots of these options deployed? So what's under the cover here? Multiple hypervisors? Good thing. Absolutely, VMware is the market leader here, but Hyper-V as an option is good, especially down on the lower end of the markets where we expect this to play. We're pushing down market. Cisco, big piece of this announcement. So Cisco is part of VCE, and while there's flexibility to be able to offer other Intel-based architectures, the question is, will the distribution channel actually deliver that? Does EMC have a broad environment that will take EMC storage and partner with the Dell, HP, and IBM's world, or will it end up being only Cisco, EMC, VMware, like we have with the VBlock? What do you think, Stu, to drill that further down, that's a good point, what do you think about I mean, that, the Intel component, and because they're here as well, um, is this a VCE party with EMC fronting it? So, I mean, so it, it's a great I mean, question, John. Uh, you know, if you look here and say, if I'm buying Cisco servers, it, it's great that Brocade's here. Brocade wants to get into the converged story, but if I'm buying Cisco servers, chances are I'm going to buy Cisco networking as part of it. So, 
is that going to be part of the issue? If VMware is really heavily engaged here, is Citrix going to be part of this? Is Microsoft going to be part of this? It's great to see the partnerships, but the proof is what solutions actually get sold out there. Um, the interview that I did earlier with uh, one of the VARs here is they're, they're a Cisco shop. And while the distributors are open to using it, if the customers aren't coming to EMC, if the, the companies that's, that sell and the customers that want HP or IBM or Dell go to their yeah. architectures, then uh, the, there's not going to be there's not going to be deployments of the flexibility. That's the promise here. Stu, one more follow-up question because this is you're hitting on a really good thread here. The channel partners. They're as loyal as far as you can throw them. I mean, they're going to go with the money, as we I always say. Coin so, operated just so, like the Salesforce, so, no, but, no, right? but it's all about multi-vendor to them. They're going to go, they're customer driven, right? Correct. If the customer says, I love HP, they say, oh, we love HP too. If they say, I love EMC, they're going to love EMC. Uh, at the end of the day, they want to do the best for the customer, and that is also being respected by delivering the best solutions. So with the multi-vendor perspective, how does that requirement with this announcement fit into it? You brought up the multiple hypervisors. What else is multi-vendor here? You brought up Brocade. What, well, well, what do you see so, as so the just, strengths just, and weaknesses of the multi-vendor? Right. So, so multi-vendor is interesting. What I think EMC and their ecosystem bring is really codifying these solutions, really understanding the storage guys really know how to build it so that it's going to work and it's going to deploy fast and therefore we're extending that outside of the, the storage realm. EMC is trying to raise their presence in the IT marketplace to be the leader of these solutions. So, you know, they're much more than storage these days, and, and they want to they wanna be the leader in, in the, these joint solutions. So I saw you, so. you as you were working in the rooms today, doing the uh, briefings, um, did anyone talk about the support side of the business? So, obviously, channel support's huge. They push this out to the marketplace. Codifying the solution's great, but something always breaks, right? Yeah. Who do they call? What's the support program? Yeah, do they have anything? Great point. So uh, I think the message that, that was out there was really, it's the cooperative support agreements. This is, you know, the classic, you know, EMC has lots of interoperability. They have good partnerships. I actually spent six years working in the Who interoperability takes the call? EMC takes the call? So it's usually any of the vendors can take the call and they will work behind the scenes to do it, but it's not like VCE where they've really pulled together. You have one separate company that does everything for you. So absolutely. Absolutely, support is not so as EMC robust. will provide support under the covers then, yes. through private label. E through. EMC has long relationships with all of these partners. They have escalation. They have engineering contact. But EMC does not have the expertise in all of the pieces. So therefore, John, you're, you're absolutely right. There, this is one of the differentiating factors of really that single SKU architecture versus you know this is more than a reference architecture, but it still fits into that. So model. EMC is in an interesting place right now because. You know, because IBM and HP and now Dell have acquired services companies, a lot of the, 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 the channel partners and service companies want to, walk, want to work with EMC. And EMC walks that fine line. Joe Tucci has said we're not going to compete with our, 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 our partners. Um, but at, at some point in time, Stu, doesn't, you know, the EMC, particularly EMC's global services capability, which is slowly, I want to say slowly, quietly growing, it throws up a lot of cash, it's got deeper, every time I turn around, they got, you know, some new consulting capability, some new training and education capability, some cloud services capability, and you say, hmm, this is sort of interesting, very quiet about it, you know, but there's a capability there, John, that uh, I think a lot of people don't recognize, and I think it's relevant here because services is almost 50% of the converged infrastructure opportunity. No, I, absolutely, Dave, great point. We've covered how EMC is kind of driving some of those new training requirements for converged infrastructure, for cloud, for big data, and really they're ahead of where the, the partner ecosystem is today in that space. So. You know, EMC, and, and they're also partnering with Cisco and VMware to offer some of these trainings. They need to enable their channel partners. One of the things that I heard was interesting is this VLabs that EMC is spinning up, this isn't just going to be EMC. They're actually going to enable some of the distributors to have a VLab on their site. So they're, they're really looking to uh, spider out into the distribution Dave, channel. What, Dave, what's your take for the global services group here? How would you describe the implications to them? Are they going to be involved in this at all? So again, I think they're very quiet about it, and I think absolutely they'll be involved. I mean, it, it, EMC's global services business is involved in virtually everything that this company does. Um, now, now, having said that, EMC's a product company. Product's a really driving thing, and services is sort of a drag along. The services group has to find opportunities, and they do a really good job of that. One of the reasons why EMC is so successful is because they are so services oriented. Uh, in fact, I remember you know, many, many, many years ago, EMC, this is ancient history, but EMC had some problems with, with disk drives, bad batch of disk drives. EMC went in, and this is Dick Egan culture, and they replaced every single one on their own dime. 
He almost, almost knocked the company out, you know, you know, put them on the brink of chapter 11, but the customer came first, and that's EMC's culture. They'll d d drag, you know, crawl through glass for the customer, and I think that's carried through. Now, what does that mean for services? It means that EMC can, you know, very quietly build up this services capability. It's got a very good one. So because converged infrastructure is complex, there is a lot of mystery, um, there's margin in that mystery, and, you know, EMC will be there to, to, to mop up whatever the channel won't, you know, or partner with the channel in those cases. And I think you're going to see more and more model innovation on the services side over time, um, much as you're starting to see with, you know, some other, other companies. Um, an example would be HP's... Um, you know, uh, uh, channel one, where you can brand it either way. I think you're going to start to see EMC do more of that as it expands, to your points, to some of its capabilities. Yeah, but, but Dave, I, I really loved your point there, talking about EMC needs to rely on the channel more than an HP or an IBM, who yeah. just have such a huge force. I mean, we know IBM is very services-led. EMC just gets much greater leverage by using the channel, Absolutely. and, you know, we, you can always learn so much more from, from those folks and get different... Uh, different viewpoints, and what I think EMC has a huge opportunity is to treat VSpecs almost like Salesforce. Is they're going to learn from the users, they're going to take new use cases and new models, feed that back to the entire community, and iterate and grow. Uh, if, just a note on the technology: you know, realize VSpecs. This is this is a 1.0 launch of this technology. There's a lot of white space out there to create new use cases, new markets. Uh, That's you know, a great to, point. To, to hit, hit totally verticals point. and hit applications is was really missing from this announcement. Uh, we talked about IBM's announcement yesterday. Really uh, a strong focus on over 100 ISVs to really codify uh, the expertise on, on technology. So uh, it's, it's early days uh, for VSpecs and there's lots of room for growth in this so space. So let's, uh, let's handicap the horses on the track. I mean, we like to do that here. So, I mean, you know, VC. Of course for every horse. horse horses for courses and courses for horses. <laughs> so, so VC got it started. Yes. Right, and you sort of Oracle Exadata was sort of there as well, and Oracle sort of beats to its own drum. Um, so then, and then HP, you know, I, when Donatelli came over to HP, I mean, he really understood the importance of converged infrastructure and made that a top priority. So I said for, for a while, remember John, I said a number of times the cube is a two horse race between uh, VCE and, uh, and HP, and that has changed. Boy, well, has well, here's, here's my take. Here's my take on this day. I have an, I have an opinion on this. Obviously, I'm not going to hold back. I think EMC is going to either win big or completely crash and burn. I'll tell you why. I think this is an amazing announcement because they're early. This, as Stu said, there's a plenty of room for innovation. SAP, is, their messaging was really along the same lines, and that's SAP's entire business. EMC is basically bringing to the market a really good hardened infrastructure product to get into the market for the channel. It's an absolute winner from a product positioning standpoint, packaging. There's a lot of headroom and a lot of profitability options for the resellers. However, given what I'm seeing in the converged infrastructure business, as we were talking about earlier, IBM, HP, a lot of other guys are in this area. If EMC can't execute, they're going to be replicated. It's going to be copied and integrated faster to people who know the channel. So my prediction is this. If EMC can integrate quickly, deliver the value for the partners, I think it's going to be a home run. So okay, so IBM, I, I, HP, Oracle, Dell, so, NetApp, so, Cisco, or yeah, sort of the, the I've, horses I've got a track. counterpoint to this because I, I, I don't, think it's a fair comparison to look at VSpecs against those converged stack solutions. This is much more uh, similar to what NetApp is doing with the FlexPod. You know, VSpecs has lots of flexibility and choice, but it is not nearly as heavily integrated as some of these environments. Look at what IBM announced yesterday. There's, you know, this box. Tell us about know, that, I, I, IBM really architected a new product. It's beyond a blade server, and it's really interesting design, but that's a major shift from what we have today. Uh, have they, they have deployments out there? No, it's not even, it's, it, it's in beta test it's right now. Beta think, right, but okay. it, you know, they had the hardware there, June, it was showing. August, As opposed to, if we look at NetApp has been shipping, uh, you know, they followed EMC, they always follow EMC and they, they understand the virtualization market really well. And that's always a dogfight between EMC and NetApp. So the reference architecture, NetApp 
you know, does very well on the channel, and the reference architecture with FlexPod's doing well. They made an announcement this week to so push what's your down point? market. Your point is to counterpoint my point, or are you saying yes. that they're going to be successful? Uh, what I'm saying is, you know, this is a different opportunity than those single so SKUs. So you're saying that they, other people can't catch up to EMC's positioning. What I'm saying is EMC took a nice leadership position in really the single SKU converged infrastructure, and NetApp took an early lead in the reference architecture where we believe there's a lot yeah, more yeah, I, I get that. Uh, revenue well, out you, there. You, you, so. Yeah, but so if, 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 if this is a, I'm not going to say vapor because it's not vapor, it's real product. No. But if the channel doesn't, can't execute it, because the positioning's perfect. You're Ian, saying it's all about the channel. Well, the channel is the channel. Right. It's the indirect sales channel. Yeah. And EMC could put as much gasoline on the fire they want in right. terms of making this frictionless with oil and soft dollars. But if the channel doesn't accept it, again, this comes back down to my loyalty. Yes. You know, the so channel will sleep with Stuart, any vendor they want. So, and it's true, but you said uh, NetApp always follows EMC. Couldn't you say that, that VSpecs followed FlexPod? Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, so here's, John, here's where I'm in violent agreement with you. It's more about the loyalty and, and really executing in the channel than it is about the technology. And that's where FlexPod and VSpecs are playing, as opposed to all those single SKUs. It's really much more of an architectural I battle. would agree also, to your point, Barbara brought this up from Brocade about the whole stack point. And uh, uh, we're going to bring Alex Williams in in a minute, but uh, cover news uh, after we're done with Stu. Okay. Then we'll wrap up for the day. But to finish this point, um, the stack issue is a lock-in issue, right? So it's one of those religious wars. So what's your comment on that? Barbara from Brocade brought that up. So as we started the discussion, the question I have is, will this be Cisco, VMware, and EMC, or will we really see Microsoft and Citrix and Brocade and you know other server guys in there? And that's a question about the, the channel and the customer pull through. Okay, before we bring in Alex Williams to go talk about the news so Dave and I can review the news with Alex, uh, I want to get Stu and Dave your perspective on this. Um, what do you think, what are you going to be watching now we're done with this launch, we've had all the guests come through the cube, we've had a chance to extract a signal from the noise, what are you guys going to be watching as this event winds down, what are you going to be watching for from EMC and the ecosystem around this whole deal? What are you going to look for in terms of what are you going to be watching for, for signs of momentum, <laughs> failure, uplift, home well, run? Well, I think, John, you, know, you always say follow the money. That's what I'm going to be watching, is, and, and you are right on. This is all about the channel, and, and the channel is where you're going to get leverage, and I want to really understand what the uptake is here. We've certainly seen, as Stu said, is, is FlexPod has done you know, quite well in the channel. Um, I think this product, this solution is going to do well in the channel, but we're going to, we're going to watch. And then I'm also going to watch, you know, I, as Stu said, IBM is basically cannibalizing its blade servers. You know, th that's a brave move. So IBM is basically saying, hey, we see you coming into our turf, we're now going to defend. So there's a, there's a bloodbath. Yeah, this is exciting. ServicesAngle.com, SiliconAngle.com, WookieBond.org. We're going to be in the front row seat and put our foot on the field here and there to, to, to see what it's like. Uh, Stu, what's your take? What are you going to be looking at? So, so I'd say if we look back a year from now, today we had 14 different designs. There should be dozens of designs that we should have in here, and the product mix should be diverse. Uh, so, you know, if you look at VCE, they've expansion got a Expansion of use cases, basically. Expansion of use cases and, and broad applicability. As I said, going back to that Salesforce announcement, we've got lots of different apps that, in, in different ways that people are changing this and tweaking this. If the VLabs can scale and they're busy and customers are buying into this and playing with it and finding new use cases and, and using it in lots of environments, then, then this can be a huge success. Okay, Stu, if you don't mind stepping out, that's great uh, for you to end Thank the you, day. Stu. Great. I want to bring in Alex Williams. Thanks, guys. Uh, who's out been writing stories. We've got the flow going on siliconangle.com. And uh, <laughs> how you doing, Alex? Hey, guys, how are you? Good, what's happening? What's happening out there? Alex, next time, don't walk in front of the camera. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. He's a rookie. Yeah, here you go. He's been on the cube a few times. You should know that. <laughs> Alex Williams is out, uh, out pounding the flesh. Matt Weinberger is out there as well, writing stories. Uh, the folks at home want to thank uh, Kristen Nicole, done a great job out there, landing all the airplanes on siliconangle.com. And of course, Wikibon's got some great Converge uh, infrastructure story. Dave wrote an epic piece today uh, titled um, Converge Infrastructures Taking the Market by Storm. Look for that post, and we'll do a summary on SiliconANGLE. So, so the news today, obviously, there's some big news going on. We covered a bunch of it earlier on. Um, let me get my notes out here. Apple, eBook, DOJ, we talked about that. The billion dollar week with the acquisition. Hunger Games, social, social proof. Google Plus redesign. Google just announced earnings, and they announced a stock split 
Larry and Sergey now get control of the company, a little, a little worried about the control of the company, so Larry and Sergey just decide to just split the stock and get their, their little magic uh, preferred stock equation to work out in their favor. Um, so um, this is something that's interesting. The Google said they would never do this. They would never split their stock. They did apparently retain control of the company for Larry and Sergey. Um, what do you guys think about that? What do you think about Google in general? Obviously, Google, everyone's saying is under threat by Facebook, um, although Facebook is crushing it, huge valuation. Google has a proven business, making a ton of money. Um, I was the first blogger to say Facebook was over a billion dollars in revenue. I broke that story uh, two years ago, almost. Um, what do you have to say about absolute power? You know, so what do you guys think about Google? But it's Google's, absolute. Google's in bil billions of dollars. Well, I think my take on this is that Google has been an incredible reference model for the industry. We talked about how, you know, today even, how, how Google is leading, you know, the enterprises into the cloud. And, you know, it's just amazing to see what they've done. Having said all that, you know, all their money comes from search and advertising. Well, yeah. well, yeah. well, Mark and I were talking about this, and people are saying Google Plus is a failure because um, they might not understand it. And I said earlier that it's a different approach. It's not a direct one-to-one -to, -one to Facebook. It's just some stats here that's coming across my screen. Time to reach 100 million users. Google, seven plus, seven months. MySpace, 36 months. Facebook, 54 months. Twitter, 62 months. And LinkedIn, 106 months. These are different times, too. You know, it's a, this is 2012 versus 2007, 8, 9, 10, when you know, we didn't have the velocity that we have now. Everyone has then a smartphone. Then why isn't Twitter yeah. up to 100 million? To, to John's point, I mean, Google in 1999 did it in seven months, which is, an, that's an amazing set of stats that you're sharing with us there. It took Facebook 54 months, Google seven months, and that's just, shows you the power of the search. Well, I think, you know, Larry Page says Google's a social spine with 170 million users, healthy growth, impressive engagement. Obviously, he's going to ride that horse. But I do think Google Plus has got a longer horizon. I don't think Google's pushing the envelope on this yet. I don't think they want to try to go head to head on a frontal attack against Facebook. I, I come back to data. I mean, to me, it's a we live in a data economy. And the companies that can figure out how to monetize that data are going to win. Google has a lot of data. Facebook has a lot of data. Zynga has a lot of data. $10 billion dollars in, in revenue in the quarter. $2.9 billion dollars in net income. $3 billion dollars in net income. Matt's actually working on a story based on their earnings. And one of the things that we're hearing is that Google Enterprise is becoming a second-class citizen. And so that's kind of an Second-class citizen in at well, Google? And yeah, Girard Google. Just yeah, Dave Girard, Girard just left. So. And, you know, and so they're looking like they're going to be shifting focus away. So if anything, you know, the Google Plus is a sign that is absolutely where the company is going. And they really aren't as focused or interested on, in Google Enterprise. As someone who's co covered Google Enterprise for, for several years, I'll tell you that in in, in in another day, you would get a lot of in, you would get a lot of uh, reach out from from Google PR. They are always contacting you. Not anymore. The blog is very so, thin. They they cut two major PR directors. It's uh, it's a different place. So Microsoft won that battle. No, no, enterprise. I don't. Think, I've been saying? covering Google Enterprise for since it was inception. I think they um, could from, have from actually. From the search they, have, they never were into the enterprise because that's their bread and butter is advertising. However, with under when Gerard was president. They made a good run they to did. get a beachhead. So, and they were always cool about their ambition. They tried to, to water down the fact that they're going to try to go after Office. Um, but at the end of the day, they rolled out a productivity suite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so they made a run at it. But I think they're realizing, and I think I agree with you, I think they're trying to water down the expectations because it's hard. Enterprise business is hard. We're hearing it from people who have been in from in the beginning. Intel, EMC, we cover HP, and these guys. We all IBM, and we all know how hard it is. So for Google to walk through the front door and pound their chest and say, hi, we're Google, we're going to own the enterprise, you know, they got bombed. <laughs> um, so they're retrenching. They have cloud storage, their data center. So I, I think I agree with you, and I'd say this. I think they're retrenching, and I think they just got to figure it out. And I think let's stay narrow. Um, with the apps and App Engine, and realize, hey, clients want SLA. They need performance. They need an ecosystem. Where's the channel distribution? Google can't do it alone. Well, it's so working for Amazon, wouldn't you say? I mean, I, I wouldn't say Amazon's a beast in the enterprise. I mean, they're just basically credit card, you know, shadow IT. Uh, well, a small and mid-sized enterprise. A after right? my question for you guys is, after listening to everyone today, how do you size up you know, the Amazon-style cloud? 
with this enterprise style cloud that we see really being promoted by a company like EMC. I just think Amazon Cloud is just not even viable for an enterprise, and I totally would disagree with you, Dave. I think for a small, medium-sized business, it's still a risky proposition. Amazon has very poor service. Okay, you lose an instance, you're done. Yeah, they're gonna say we're doing some new things. They're just pure, it's like a tech junkyard. You go there and you gotta configure all your own things. You got raw, raw iron, you put it all together. Amazon is amazing. Great for developers, because they can stitch it together. Great for people who need spot resources, they can put it together. Great for Zynga to start their company because they can put it together. But you hit a point where it just doesn't work. Right, well. so I think we, we're, 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 we actually are agreeing. But, but you would, I think you would agree that Amazon web services have been a success. Right? Oh yeah, for yeah. Web, Amazon, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, so my, my point to Alex's question would be that I think the enterprise has seen that and said, wow, we have to somehow model that success. And the way we're going to do it is private cloud, converged infrastructure. I think that's what you know, this announcement is Yeah, I mean, what Amazon about. did in the private public cloud is a great use case for an enterprise to saying, hey, let's do one in a private cloud. Yes. What, what I don't see enterprises and, going to Amazon and saying, the, hey, give point. me some Amazon. That's the driver for a lot of the yeah. converged infrastructure trends that we're seeing. I mean, today. I think Google, I mean, I think just the whole notion of IT in an enterprise is going radically getting reconstructed. Just the notion of having Outlook. Right, exchange servers, uh, desktop PCs. Just go back 10 years. Go back to 1999, 2000. Devices that you know, are synced. Right? <laughs> it's like, he's just like, what? Yeah. Shared printer? Uh, it's not wireless? What? I can't, you know, if I got 4G, I can do HD video now. So I think the world's changing. So what's going on in IT is they just got to modernize. So I think cloud is real. From a serviceability standpoint, I think the services angle is SMBs is a gold mine. Whoever can crack the nut on SMB, Small, medium-sized enterprises will, will nail it because they need turnkey and push-button support. Basically, like a, what a laser jet was for printing, they, they would get that. I think that's a home run. Yeah, that's a, a and on the sense. high end, this kind of product for a large reseller trying to differentiate? Well, I think this is a lot about mid-sized enterprises. Oh, yeah. Smaller enterprises today. That's really the target here. You know, V-Block is really about larger enterprises, and I think that V-Specs is about you know, the mid-sized, yeah. the smaller enterprises. No, no question. Other, right. other news, Alex, uh, notice there's an OpenStack post up. So this has been a week of OpenStack. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, it feels like Citrix. OpenStack is like we're already in next week. So, mm -hmm. so we got the OpenStack thing going on, but let's just go back and just revisit what happened. Citrix bails, puts their stuff with Apache. Right. SolidFire just announced support for OpenStack. Yep. HP launched their cloud services, which and they're heavily in bed with OpenStack. Um, Got AW Search, uh, Amazon Web Services announcing this search product. So you get Amazon's getting into the game. So it's it's a public cloud kind of little oh, scuffle yeah. going on right now. So what's your what's your what's your report on that? What's your take on what's going on in that OpenStack community area? Well, I, I think it's just such early days that there's going to be a lot of turmoil, and OpenStack really has had issues with its foundation, and they're trying to correct that with the announcement of it. Really, that came out today. OpenStack. Foundation though still has some 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 aspects to it that some you know people noted in the community don't exactly recognize as really being exactly what they were seeking. There's you know there's 18 companies that are basically financing it. You know they're putting up the dollars and the concern is it the, too much of a tech and, orgy and, right now? And the concern in the community is that those that those companies will just have too much power. Is it too much of a incestuous tech orgy, or is it? Is there? I mean, I'm hearing from multiple well, sources that I mean, it's a marketing. Say, it's a marketing thing on one hand. How is it an incestuous tech orgy? Well, they're all trying to, you know, <laughs> come in and say, you know, I got a cloud, I got OpenStack, and but then I got some people saying we're actually deploying OpenStack. So, you know, I mean, we saw this in a lot of emerging in client server. It was Land Manager and all these standards. Dave, you've seen. Well, these we've standards. written about it, right? I mean, we we've said OpenStack's not ready for prime time. The object store is weak. The you know, solid fire is getting in. That's great, but you know they, they don't even have an analog to uh, uh, Amazon's block services. So I mean, this is it's still early days. People if Amazon's struggling in the enterprise, how's OpenStack going to do it? Well, I'm hearing people really not give up on OpenStack, even though I've been critical of well, OpenStack I, being a marketing it, program for people wanting to cloud wash themselves. But we're seeing adoption. I'm seeing people tell me we're running some OpenStack. It's got some meat in the bone. So I'm hearing people say that they're still committed to it. But I think you could arguably say that Amazon isn't doing so poorly in the enterprise. I mean, you see a company like Eucalyptus Systems, Red Hat Storage, you know, Red Hat, they're, they're all working with Amazon. Right. There, there's, yeah. there, there really is a connection there. I mean, the Amazon has its well, gateway I'm, product. I'm not saying they're a total dud. Amazon's a great success story. I love Amazon. I love what they're doing. They set them the, the gold standard for what cloud is and, and on, on, on demand resources. 
However, they are not knocking it out of the park in the enterprise. They have some relationships. Um, but they got work to do. They have to build a full-on SLA. So that's my point. But regardless, right? yeah, I mean, you're right that, that, that a lot of people are, are supporting OpenStack. Hey, we support the open source concept. HP, no no Dell, doubt. HP is in there. There's definitely HP has been a major commitment. But there's still uh, thin ice, right? I mean, there's a lot that could go wrong there. And so we've got to see you know, more real live use cases and deployments. Yeah, so we're going to cover, we're going to cover that next event. We're going to, we're going to be on it, Dave. And I think I'm open, OpenStack, I think is going through an, um, not identity crisis, but a direction, a kind of a, a re of direction. So I wouldn't say that they're being t dismantled. I just, I just say that I think they're making a the course adjustment. Yeah. I mean, I see it as more of a course adjustment, especially with the Citrix move. Um, but that's that. Let's, let's, let's talk about something else, Alex, Cloud Foundry. So this week yeah. we, we had a lot of things going on. We had yeah. SAP event and we had Cloud Foundry. What's your report from both those uh, environments? Um, well, let's start with Cloud Foundry. I, I was just very impressed overall. It's a one year anniversary. You look at their growth, it's significant. They made some announcements there that I think really were really smart, like Bosch, which is this com really, really, which is a chef puppet combination in essence, very much of a DevOps move automating this process. We also, uh, you know, starting to hear about them, what they're going to be doing in terms of offering more services for the enterprise. They're not specific about that, but this is where I think you can start to see where you're going to start to see, you know, platforms as a service starting to integrate more with infrastructure as a service. It's a layer on top of it as kind of this application environment. So I was very impressed with the Cloud Foundry uh, news that they had. The SAP was really interesting as well. You know, they want to be a database company. Uh, and you wonder how they were going to do that. And in the night before, I had talked to some of the SAP mentors, and they had said, well, they could go for the, the rip and replace met method, or they could go for innovation. And they really did go for innovation by investing in the ecosystem um, with Adobe and AppCelerator and Sensha. So that was a really smart move. But I think even the more interesting move is how they're, tr they're, they're offering this, uh, this fund, the $337 million fund that that they will offer to companies that, are, that, are, that will adopt HANA. That was a really smart move. That, that takes a lot of the risk out. They can set the HANA up as a separate, you know, separate stack and see how it works. SAP's smiling and dialing. They're really pumped. It's great to see them. I agree with you on that, SAP Psych. Okay, we're getting uh, the boot here. The Cube is, well, doesn't want to leave these events. We love coming to the events. We'll especially go all night. EMC, we love EMC, and VSpec is a great new product in the channel. Ahead of its time, if it executes as a home run for EMC, we'll be watching it. This is the Cube, and we have some upcoming events we want to share with you. We're going to be at NAB next week. Which is really exciting, John. I mean, we have the, the Intel. The National Association of Broadcasters. The Cube will have a massive, almost a million dollar set at NAB. So if you're going to go to NAB, it's like a million dollar set built out for the queue. Interactive, 3D, the whole Just deal. Just check it out. This is, like a, this is the new standard. And uh, it's really Intel is laying the bar down uh, as the gauntlet for Jeremy Burton, EMC, EMC CMO, HP CMO, uh, and everyone else who wants to up, upgrade the cube. <laughs> it's a million dollar set at <laughs> NAB. So we're, gonna, we're, just gonna, we're excited by that. Uh, Meanwhile, SAP Sapphire, we will not have a million dollars set <laughs> after talking to them. So, Jonathan, if you're watching, the CMO, you know, got to up your game a little bit. Uh, so we're going to be at SAP Sapphire. Of course, EMC World, uh, the Cube was really founded at EMC World 2010. Uh, we're excited. We think we're going to have Joe Tucci on from what we're hearing. So we're really excited about EMC World and hearing a little bit what Jeremy was saying. It's, it's going to be a great show. HP Discover. IBM Edge, Dell Storage Forum, Hadoop Summit, HBase Conference, Cloud Expo, um, the Open Data Center Alliance, Google I.O., VMworld, Oracle Open World, Strata, O'Reilly Velocity, O'Reilly Oscon, O'Reilly, I'm missing one, there's one more other O'Reilly conference we're going to go to, um, and then a few more in, in the later in the fall. So that's the summer tour. Look for the queue at those events. Uh, we're excited to be expanding, and uh, I want to thank Mark Hopkins and Kean for a great job. And Kristen and the Home Ranch kit art. Uh, thanks for doing the videos. We have a video snafu on the uploads. We have as much video as we can. It'll all be up tomorrow. Uh, Dave, thank you. John, pleasure. Thanks for having me. Alex, thanks for your report. So thank you. that's a wrap from uh, San Francisco. EMC uh, Specs launch. Good job, David Stu. Lawyer. Yep. Awesome. Bert, thank you guys. Bye bye. All right, that's it from here. See you next time.